welcome back and as you can tell by the title of the video I'm going to turn this log splitter into a forging press but I'm only going to drill one hole in it right about there stay tuned Use the rust it rained a little bit today but as you can see the tooling just slips over the end in place and the punch is held on with just one bolt which i drilled a hole through the uh, just a clearance hole through the splitting wedge so if i want to go back to cutting wood take this bolt out pull off the punch lift this piece off and it's a log splitter again but it's definitely a time saver for me um, Piercing these big holes in axes is uh, difficult to do under the power hammer um, and pretty much impossible to do by hand by yourself unless you've got a striker with a sledgehammer. So although it's not a perfect solution, um, this is working for me and uh, I'll probably continue to refine it a little bit. I need to do something to guide the ram. This floats around a little bit too much so I had to tap it into place and get it lined up exactly on my center punch marks. Um, so I'll probably build some sort of a guide on either side of the punch here, which will just center it for me, allow it everything else to float. But I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to comment, and uh, I'll do my best to get back to everyone.
Uh, there's no sense in me giving you dimensions or anything for what I've done here. I just kind of winged it. Um, pieces of scrap metal I had laying about. And um, I think the important stuff to remember is that everything's, aside from this piece, which I welded together, and of course the punch, which is welded to its punch holder, everything is bolted together. So I can take it apart. I can get to the screws. You can see here I've got two different heights for the position of the dies, depending on what I'm piercing. Um, and I can continue to modify it because I chose to bolt it together. And not that difficult a proposition to do it this way. You don't need too many tools, um, aside from the transfer screws that I used and buttons, which not everybody would have, but I'm sure you can probably still get your hands on them. Here are the couple special tools I use, quarter 20 transfer screws. These are basically just a center punch on the end of a small thread, which you screw into your workpiece and then line everything up and then give it a light top with a hammer. So that's for threaded hole transferring. And then these are spotting buttons. Same idea, but these fit inside the clearance holes. Um, so if you've got clearance holes, you want to transfer over to your tapped holes this would work. If you've got tapped holes you want to transfer over for clearance holes, you'd use these. You probably get these at McMaster Car. Um, not sure where else. Kind of an old school toolmaker thing. Um, when I was a toolmaker on the bench, CNC was kind of uh, for special occasions only. And uh, we lined up everything by hand, drilled all the holes by hand. And uh, yeah, these are just tools I used back in the day. I'm also going to make myself a little bit smaller punch here. Um, I noticed this one really flares the material out quite a bit. I'm going to thin this down a little bit more on the grinder. Um, not sure what material this is. It was a jackhammer bit. It doesn't seem to be S7. It's not as hard as other jackhammer bits I've worked with. No idea. Anyways, this is Atlantic 33. Um, this is a water hardening, non-tempering tool steel. Um, yeah, this stuff looks good. So I think a thinner punch is in order for my axe blanks. That'll be the next modification along with a guide mechanism.